please do not touch, please do not smell, and certainly do not taste any of the plants that are in here because it could result in death. She said that it was the yew tree. Uh, help? Welcome to the northeast of England. If you're joining me for the first time, hi, I'm Caroline, and I'm spending a week adventuring around the area of the UK that I grew up in. So far, I've gone chasing waterfalls on a rainy circular hike in the North Pennines and explored the Roman Fort and Museum of Vindolanda. Today, we've driven further north to the town of Annick and we'll be exploring the stunning Annick Gardens, take a walk through its town and check out the British Library of Secondhand Bookshops, that is, Barter Books. And welcome to Annick. I've come along to Annick's Gardens and it's part of Annick Castle. It is the third most visited gardens in the UK and if just coming through this entrance here and being greeted with this beautiful fountain is anything to go by, it's making me very excited for what else this place has got to offer. garden that can be found at the top of the cascading waterfalls and this has got up to I think 16,000 different species of plants from all across Europe. I think this is supposed to be the serene part of the garden but unfortunately we've got gardeners with rather noisy machinery to trim hedges and what have you. We also seem to have an awful lot of aircraft flying above and almost on cue as I brought that up you can hear the roar again a bit but the flowers are absolutely stunning, all kinds of different colours. You've got little pockets where you go beyond hedges and then you come across fountains and the bees and the butterflies are also out in their true form collecting all of the nectar and pollen from the flowers. So it is rather nice even though it is a little bit on the loud side. swing set. Again, it's really lovely, quite peaceful, except for every time an aircraft goes over, I think might need to wait until this afternoon when Newcastle Airport starts circling their aircrafts the, the other way around so that it's not coming over and it gardens so much. <laughs> after the cherry blossom orchard was supposed to have been the poison garden but it's closed during lunchtime so given that it's lunchtime we decided to come back in front of the fountains for a bit of a show whilst we eat some lunch picked up some ham and cheese sandwiches so very simple and straightforward but uh, as always try and find a stunning view to eat our packed lunch <laughs> gardens were originally designed in 1750 by Capability Brown and he was the garden designer who also designed Sheffield Park and Gardens which I visited back last autumn. During the Second World War there was an effort to try and get people to grow their own food and obviously with the landscape as large as what Annick Castle's grounds were they were growing things like crops as well as vegetables and fruits but with the austerity after the Second World War these grounds fell into disarray and it wasn't until very late 90s did the Duchess of Northumberland decide to reinvent these gardens and the fountain that you can see behind me was one of the original features brought to these gardens in the early millennia 
it has 120 jets in there and every half an hour there is a display of water fountains that then goes off. And loads of the kids are enjoying in this summer heat just playing around in the fountains right down at the very bottom as they sort of stand underneath the cascades. And yeah, on a hot day like today, I can understand why they're enjoying cooling off like that. Poison Garden's opened up and we've come on in and we've only taken like a few meters to get through so far and one of the really nice things about this garden is that the Duchess of Northumberland decided that it wasn't right that people were only learning about the plants that had positive medicinal purposes. She wanted for children to be educated on also the poisonous plants that could turn up in people's back gardens. If you're not educated on it, you could make yourself very, very ill or worse, kill yourself. So the education of these poisonous plants is really important. I think some of them not as poisonous as others and you might be able to see behind me that there is a cage. I think the most deadly and most poisonous ones in here are very much out of reach of anyone behind those cages. But as we were coming in, we were told very clearly, please do not touch, please do not smell, and certainly do not taste any of the plants that are in here because it could result in death. One of the plants that's hidden behind the cages is the ricin plant and along the walls of the garden are plaques about people who've been murdered using these poisonous plants and there is an umbrella murder where an umbrella was pricked up against a, a passerby in London and it had like a little pellet of ricin in there but what one of our guides has explained to us is that the actual ricin plant is like a spiky bit at the top and he said inside of there is the bean and when they make castor oil he was explaining that you have to boil it in water at the 80 degree mark and then they'll scrape the oil off of the top because that obviously rises to the top whilst the water goes down to the bottom and it just seems crazy that something that is so poisonous such as ricin is also used for something that actually we use in like daily life. The next plaque around is perhaps a person who a lot of British people will be very familiar with the name of, Dr. Harold Shipman, who was a GP who had used opium to poison 15 of his patients. He was sentenced in the year 2000, which just seems crazily not that long ago. I was expecting that these sorts of stories would come about from people who did these atrocities centuries ago. But yeah, once again, an another plant opium killing Patience, you a GP, killing your patients. Nuts. Moving around to the next plaque is the teacup poisoner and he used deadly nightshade. I guess you can put it into cups, pour boiling hot water over it. So this, the belladonna, is what the teacup poisoner had used and that the guide in the garden has explained that this flower here eventually will turn into almost like a little berry. She said it goes really, really black, but it's quite shiny. She said that it looks not too dissimilar to a black currant. And so children can see that and be quite attracted to it. And it would only take about four of these for a child to ingest to kill them and for an adult it would be somewhere about eight up to twelve and obviously it depends on I suppose how large you are as to how many you would need but especially for a small child if they were to mistake it for being a black currant it would only take four that is incredibly scary apparently it's also part of the same family as the potato and the tomato and she was explaining that for those ones it's okay to eat them but obviously if the potato is a bit green then there's a lot of toxicity within the potato whereas this it's like it is definitely a no-go and, and as we know if people have been poisoned with it thinking that it was tea If we have a guide and they ask, if, has anyone got any questions? One of the things that I really like to ask is like, what's your favorite thing or the thing that you like to talk most about? And she said that it was the yew tree. She was explaining that just about 
everything about the yew tree is very very poisonous so whether it's like the little leaves or it's the bark and it can pretty much kill you in about 20 minutes and in that 20 minutes there are next to no side effects or anything that gives any hint that you're falling unwell she said that right towards the end there might be a little bit of staggering around and a little bit of salivating and whilst if you can get to a hospital they probably would be good enough to be able to do something about it such as pumping your stomach being able to get to the hospital in those 20 minutes can be very very difficult for most yeah, people no, 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 she was saying that these sorts of trees are often found in church graveyards and it was because people believed that the roots would grow down and through the eye sockets and it would prevent the the bodies from raising up again after they died We've just come through the serpent garden and I think the idea is it's supposed to be like water mixed with a very gentle and light physics lesson but on a boiling hot summer's day like today it was just full of lots and lots of kids wearing swimwear running in and out of the fountains and just playing cooling down so you just kind of have to take my word for it as to what this section of the garden's like because obviously filming young children without your own in swimsuits is never a good idea. Okay, we are taking the risk. We have come into the bamboo maze and hopefully we don't get too lost. Laura and I have managed to make it into the centre of the bamboo maze and in fairness it wasn't actually too difficult to get into the middle of but on the floor in the middle is a load of words in Latin and Laura being a Latin teacher obviously was trying to translate it and one of the words just seemed like it should be urinate and she didn't share that fact with me and at which point I was like oh I actually need to pop to the loo which just added to the hilarity of it but it turns out instead of it being to urinate it's actually just to piss off. section that we've made our way into at the gardens is the rose garden now it was on their website saying that it's quite a party for the senses and you can really smell the roses but i have to say that i'm just not getting that fragrant smell and they were saying as well that you can get the the bird song if you come to the far end can't hear any birds in fact to be honest most of it has actually just been the children playing in the water in the section next to the rose garden as well as again just gardeners with their machinery it's been really stunning and we've also been able to see the quite rare or exclusive anik rose moved away from the paid for section of Anik Garden and we've come into what's known as the Roots and Shoots and it is basically a vegetable garden that I believe is a program for elderly people. They get their own vegetable patch and raise vegetable beds and they get to grow the sorts of vegetables that grow quite easily here in Great Britain. Obviously being August at the moment the sorts of things that we're seeing are cabbages, courgettes, we've got turnips and also corn on the cob which I love and I'm a bit of a sucker for. There's really cool scarecrows dotted throughout. I'm not too sure who's put those together but they're really quite artistic there's also an honesty box situation that they've got going on so you can put in like a couple of quid and take home some of the vegetables that are pretty much at their peak now I think what's really nice is if you go right into the top corner of this garden you've got this stunning view of Annick Castle we've not been able to see that from within the paid section of the garden so it's definitely worth coming into this part of it Mm -hmm. 
the tree house is accessed by these really, really wobbly rope bridges in amongst all of the tree canopies. And then you go into like these wooden boardwalks. And it's really magical. I think this tree house is like one of the biggest ones in the world. It's huge and it's like a restaurant and a bar. And it's so pretty here. <laughs> Well, that was a really lovely wander around the exterior of the tree house, but it is a rather fancy schmancy restaurant. There was one family who wandered on in and very quickly came back out because the kids were both uh, not wearing any t-shirts or anything because they'd been playing in the fountains and the dad was going, this is definitely the sort of place where you need to be wearing a top. They do hold weddings as well in there just to give a sort of idea as to just how fancy it is. It was spectacular to see it from the outside and heaps of fun just exploring on the ropeway bridges and the boardwalks up inside of the tree trees. made a quick pit stop at the Anik ice cream parlor and picked up a one scoop of salted caramel because it's just been one of these beautiful summer days so hot and ice cream I think is the perfect way to be rounding off the day. We do have a couple of stops outside of the castle gardens. One is to go and see the castle and then one is a secondhand bookshop. <laughs> Gardens was just over £15 including gift aid and had we wanted to also go into Annick Castle it would have been just shy of £20 so all in all quite an expensive day out. Instead of rushing around the gardens and then rushing around the castle we just decided go to the gardens but our research told us if we go slightly north of Annick Town Centre there's a bridge called the Lion's Bridge aptly called because there is a lion carving on top of it and you'll get beautiful views out across the river and some green fields up to the castle which I'm sure would have been great had we just not timed it really, really badly. And as you can probably see, we've got scaffolding around part of it. Kind of been bracing myself whilst I've been talking to the camera because there was a sign as I came onto this grassy area saying that they do let off the cannons. Thankfully it hasn't gone, otherwise I'd have probably have jumped out of my skin. But even though it isn't perhaps as beautiful a view as what it could be if they weren't doing restoration works to the castle. It was a beautiful walk through the town, lovely sandstone buildings, of course got to stop off at an ice cream parlour and it's just got some really cutesy shops and galleries and a few cobbled street areas so it should be nice to have a nosy round. This isn't the final stop seeing the castle, we do still have Barter Bucks to go which is supposed to be quite the institution and if you've never heard of it before then you are in hopefully for a treat with what I'm about to show you next. I figured I'd come out and speak a little bit about my experience inside of Barter Bucks there because in part they are asking that we still wear masks in, in the UK. You don't legally have to wear them indoors anymore but given that I'm not exempt or wasn't ever exempt and they're asking for it, it would be muffled. You wouldn't be able to lip read if you are a lip reader. So I thought I'd just come out here and speak a little bit about the amazing bookshop that is Barter Bucks. From the outside you might be able to tell that it is the old train station that was here at Annick but no train routes existed after the government tried to dissolve many of the different train lines and so instead the owners of the bookstore took this on and the bookshop started off as this idea where people could bring in their books they could exchange those books for tokens that could be redeemed within the bookshop and hence the term barter, barter books. As time went on, it started to make a real name for itself and it started to expand. Nowadays, they've got books in that are rarities, they've got books in that are signed by the authors. And looking at the price of some of these, it's some were well into the hundreds of pounds. I think the highest price that I saw was into the 400s. Inside, they've also got this huge mural up on the wall of really well-known authors. They also bought a, I guess, a box or a trunk of books at auction quite a few years ago now but what they found 
found inside of there was one of those keep calm and carry on posters and that was back before it became trendy and when they found that poster they started to make some replicas of it and that keep calm and carry on poster that we've seen just about everywhere in the 21st century the trend actually started from here when the owners found it so one of the really cool things that I love about in there is just how laid back and chilled everyone is. People are allowed to take their dogs in there with them to shop for books. And they've also got towards the front of the bookshop a model train running around the top of the bookcases, which is very cute and quite, I think, very apt given the building that it's in. They've taken the first and the third class waiting rooms and they've converted those into a cafe or a buffet or something along those lines. So it is possible to come here and potentially spend an entire day here if you're really that much into books and you can have lunch here. But the one thing that I really like is that it is actually open until seven o'clock in the evening. So even though the castle's gardens close at six o'clock, that would allow you an hour to get from the gardens over to the bookshop peruse some books maybe buy some and it's just a really nice way to wind off or end off a day here in Annick.